Hello. We've done talk. We've done all that stuff. Now we're going to go talk to Mogul again. Well, it looks like Owen's finally doing the repairs we need. The damn fool is falling over a drunk and still manages to make smithying look easy. Good enough, I say. I'll inform Bantig and the militia is ready to fight. We'll give those bastards a welcome they won't soon forget. Persuade. We're not only ready, Murdoch. We're going to win. I hope you're right. We may just be village folk, but we're going to fight like there's no tomorrow. Is there anything else I can do? We could use some extra bodies. Having a veteran like Dwin in the militia would help a lot, but he flat out refuses. Tell me about Dwin. He's a trader, a dwarf. Lives near the lake. Ah, fellow dwarf. Locked himself up in his home with some of his workers, he has. Says he doesn't need any of us. We could use somebody with his fighting experience, but he won't come out. Um, I want to discuss something else. There's not much time before sundown. Uh, I'll be back. I need to check on something. I have a good feeling about tonight. Well, that's good then. But I feel we still have more stuff we can do around here. Nothing up there. Ooh, death route. Rough. Rough, rough. Rough, rough. <laughs> Oh, guess not then. Run! It's a door. Wind's home. The door is locked and looks as if it has been recently repaired. Knock on the door. There is no res- Whoa, I hit that freaking hard. Lock picking. Pick the lock on the door. You failed to pick the lock. It is now hopelessly jammed. Ah, oh, screw it. I'm coming in. Oh. Wonderful. Intruders. I hope you have a good reason for breaking and entering into my home. Is that how you greet a fellow dwarf? Up here on the surface, you'll find we're all the same. And here that means unwelcome. Even a fellow lowborn like yourself. The name's Dwin. Pleased to meet you. Now, kindly tell me why you're here. Um, Murdoch says he needs you for the militia. militia. Uh, so... Murdoch sending a dwarf to do his begging for him? Hoping I'll get all misty-eyed with thoughts of home? Look, I'll tell you the same thing I told him. I'm not risking my neck for this town. Can't I change your mind? Hmm. I have to admit, you have a better chance than most. At least another dwarf is likely to have a few rocks to rub together between their ears. What do you have in mind, then? Let's hear it. I'll put in a good word for you back in Orzammar, even though my word's worthless because I'm a castless and they won't listen to anything I say. I'll put... Oh, I'll do that anyway. Uh-huh. And that means exactly what? Nothing. I'm a surface dwarf. And if you're still welcome there, more power to you. I'll put in a good word with you for you with the band Tegan of all the Arl. Hmm. You might just be able to pull that off. Fine. I'll throw in with the militia. For now. You better be out there too when the sun goes down. I'm not fighting for a lost cause, you hear me? Damn straight. Well, that was easy. Now I get to raid his house while he's out. Can't open that chest. Alright then. Uh, now we gotta find... Recruitment drive! Oh, I can go in there. General store. Oof. Excuse me. 
Ooh, a chest. Allow me. I could do that for you. Yeah, if you fail me, I'm gonna laugh. Ah ha ha ha! Told you. <laughs> barrels. There is lamp oil in these barrels. Well, gee, thanks. It's not as though I could figure that out myself. There's like big letters on it just say lamp oil. Right, where am I going? This way. To the beach! Why are you here? What do you mean? Women are priests, or merchants, or artisans, or farmers. None of those have any place fighting. I have no idea how to answer this. As you wish. It is not done. There is no more to it. Do you mean your people have no female mages or warriors? Of course not. Why would our women wish to be men? What are you talking about? They don't wish to be men. They shouldn't. That can only lead to frustration. <laughs> Dan. No, never mind. Let's drop this. The uh, stem and his prejudice people. Uh. Anyway, uh, let's go punch some chickens! Urgh. Yeah! Anyway, let's have a look around. Ooh, a house. Caitlin's home. Alright. Um, let's head in here. When you approach the dresser, something moves inside. You hear a short, surprised intake of breath and then silence. Hello? Is someone there? Go away. This isn't your home. A small human. I say burn it out. <laughs> ah, what are you doing? All right, I'll come out. Oh, nice one, Stan. Please, don't hurt me. I'll go back to the Chantry if you want. I didn't mean any harm. First, tell me what you were doing in there. I... I can't tell you. It's a secret. Are you sure? Maybe I could help you. You could. Alright, I guess. I just... Father said I could have his sword when I grew up. It was Grandfather's. And Grandfather was a great dragon slayer. I thought... If I was brave like Grandfather... I could use his sword and kill the bad people who took mother. Where is the sword now? In the chest. In mother's room. Father gave me a key, but I'm not supposed to give it to anyone. Perhaps I could help you and your sister in return. You could? Maybe you could give my sister money? She said if we had money, we'd be all right, even if Mother is dead. I'll talk to your sister about it, I promise. Oh, all right. Here's the key. I hope you use it to kill a lot of those bad people. I should go back to the Chantry. Yep. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, now I get to rave your home. Rave? Glow sticks. <laughs> it just just glow sticks. Legend of Callan had chapter one. More codex entries to read at some point. Hey, running out of time, but I'll quickly open this chest. There it is, green blade. It is much well. Huh. It might not actually be better than what I've got. So I shall give it to Alistair. So yeah, for the moment, we'll stop here. In the next episode, we shall be still doing stuff. So yeah, bye.